<laughs> Welcome everybody to the semi-finals of the third Star Crossed Cup. This is going to be Giap versus Jove. Jove took out si Sib 2-0, I believe, on Crossing in the Woods in round four. The semi-final map was selected by Vito's, by the way, and it's a best of five. We have a new sniper under our command. So, this should be good. Wait, why? <laughs> Who just put it in slow mode? <laughs> Don't put it in slow mode mod. Who did that? How do I unslow mode? Hold on. Hold on, I have to uh, Google how to turn off slow mode because I don't know how to do that. I should really know how to do this by now, shouldn't I? Does anybody know the, the chat command to turn off slow mode? <laughs> Just tell me what it is, because I don't know what it is. It's off? Oh, it's off? Okay. It's off. Oh, slash slow off. Okay. Thank you, Comash. That was weird. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> semifinals. Welcome to the semifinals. Giap vs. Jove. Giap has immediately chosen Rifle Company here. Uh, on Famineville Approach, certainly a sensible decision, and Jove has chosen close air support. These are huge picks. We've seen them all tournament long. I'm curious to see uh, actually how this ma how this matchup is going to go. It's a best of five. It is a best of five, and they do fresh vetoes every map, so we could see some interesting maps. They're not not all games are played on the same map. That is a big change between uh, the last Star Cross Cup and this one. I wanted the best of five not to be every all five games potentially on the same map because that gets a little bit stale. So they do vetoes every single game. Vet rifles grabbing some strategic points here. Rear echelon troops moving to take control of the munitions there in the north, and that's a sniper opening by Joe. Pretty risky sniper opening. He's gonna try and make it work against Rifle Company on this map. There's a lot of cover and a lot of opportunities for that sniper to engage at range safely. And a lot of Rifle Company players go captain tier, leaving them without a light vehicle to counter the sniper. Not all of them, but... Once you see that sniper, the temptation to go lieutenant becomes very strong. So... I'm curious to see how Giap is going to react to this decision. Rear echelon troops laying barbed wire here in the north. Rifles taking control of this fuel point right here. And rear echelon troops moving to take control of the victory point here in the north. And yes, Pochisi, that is how it works. There's a set pool, which you can look at in the tournament rules, the announcement. Some mod might be able to link that for you. There's a set pool of maps in the semis and finals that uh, they veto from, and the top seed gets uh, last veto, I believe. Which is, so that's how that works. So in a sense, the top seed is the one who gets to choose between the final two maps that, are, that have not yet been vetoed, which is kind of a... A small advantage, I guess you might say, but since the pool is quite large, the com both competitors have ample chance to remove any map that they definitely don't want to play on. Sniper is up to three kills. These two rifle squads moving to engage against these riflemen right here. And the sniper is moving to get in range on these riflemen. Grenadier is taking control of this strategic point right here. 
rear echelon troops moving to grab this strategic point. And a lieutenant has hit the field. He's going to go utility car to try and counter that sniper. The sniper has been managed pretty effectively so far. Only four kills at four minutes. Just generally trying to avoid taking too much manpower bleed. And these two squads are moving to engage against these grenadiers. Also, some Pios being forced away by rear echelon troops right there. Grenadiers do secure building control here in the center. And that M20 is on the field. And Giaf doesn't purchase armor skirts. That's That seems to be his thing. He does not get skirts on that M20. We saw that in his series against... Um, not Love Nest, but uh, in round three against, uh, oh, I don't even remember who his opponent was. Man, shame on me. That's how scatterbrained I am right now. He, okay, I take that back. Apparently he does want skirts this time. He does want skirts. So. M20 pulls back, needs some repairs. Away from the Panzerfaust, soaks up a little bit of munitions. Soaking up munitions with the M20 is almost valuable in and of itself, if you can do so. Against an opponent who is really strangled for munitions, which clearly Jove is, trying to strangle Oster munitions early in the game, a very important thing to do. And doing a good job of it so far. Jove, of course, once he had three CPs, may be able to offset that stranglehold a little bit with redistribute resources, but until then, that M20 soaking up Panzerfaust is a big deal. That's a whole full minute worth of munitions every time he has to Faust that M20 and push it off the field, and that's that's a lot of munitions. Munitions that needs to be spent on a medic bunker, munitions that needs to be spent on an LMG, and, uh, and so forth. Rifleman here in the south taking light damage from those grenadiers. That's just stalling for munitions, though. It's clearly just, just trying to keep that munition strangled on the Ost Terror. Doing a really good job of that. Here comes a 2 2 1. He's going to have to exhaust all of his munitions reserves if he wants a 2 2 2 upgrade on that thing. And in the meantime, this M20 is just going to bully him off the field. It's completely uncountered. He can't even afford to Faust it. He doesn't even need really to go in on that sniper. He's putting immense early pressure on his opponent right here. Although Jove, having secured these two buildings, may find a little bit of space to take some to take some new territory. That rifle squad stalling in the south finally has to retreat off the battlefield. Meanwhile, M6 anti-tank mine getting planted here. Barbed wire being laid here as well. Grenadiers making their way north. Getting hit! Getting hit! Reinforcements in! 90 day wonders all in! All done over here! She might just make it. M20 pushes away that Pio squad. Things are pretty quiet. Just very light engagements right now while Giap is off the field reinforcing and healing his squads. He's about to make his next big push to try and take a really strong hold on the map, try and set up a really aggressive containment. The engagement between the 222 and the M20 that's coming is going to be very important in deciding how the rest of this game goes. Bazooka jumps out of the M20, rear echelons jump inside. Lieutenant is heading right and will engage against some grenadiers in this building. Only one west facing window, so that's not a huge deal. Sniper gets a couple riflemen dropped right there. M20 is going in hard on the sniper and will retreat. 222 moves to head the M20 off. There's Vet 1 on that rifle squad, but they cannot get in range for the. Or maybe they can. He stops kiting. AT grenade should connect if he chooses to use it, but he doesn't. He's just going to sit there in green cover. So I guess I misread that engagement. Now, Scout Car did not pull back to safety, and those riflemen did not grenade it. <laughs> just kind of stared at each other for a second there. Rifleman then retreated. 
There's the ambulance from Giap, who is now floating quite a bit of manpower. Hasn't purchased anything besides the ambulance and utility car for the last several minutes. Because he's floating for Major, he's going to have a little bit of extra manpower if he really wants to get that Sherman out just a few seconds quicker. He might consider dropping some of that float on a fuel cache. Fuel caches are very, very easy to protect on this map. You almost never see harassment of this point, or of this point. Not at least with anything that could destroy a cache. So... Definitely could be a viable option. That, or maybe just more vetted riflemen, or of course, if he's really feeling edgy, he might actually field a team weapon. <laughs> like a 50 cal, which on this map can be useful inside these buildings. Grenadiers take control of this house here. This squad of grenadiers moving to do some back capping on the right. Flamethrower riflemen taking control of this munitions point here in the south. These grenadiers are taking control of this strategic point as well. Two 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 will move to re-engage the M20 right here. Flamethrower riflemen engaging the grenadiers inside of this building. Brings them quite low, but they get pressured out by the two two two. Minesweeper engaging a little bit. Rifle grenade, nice dodge. There's a lot of engagements happening simultaneously right now. That dodge was very, very tight. Sniper continues taking shots. He somehow manages to find a line for that sniper despite these buildings. Very nice sniper micro, keeping him at a safe distance and firing very frequently. 11 kills at 10 minutes isn't great, but he might be able to catch up a little bit during this engagement. He needs to keep moving and stay away from those riflemen, and which will all make a full retreat away from the 222. Another engagement happening here for the south will force those grenadiers to retreat, though, from flame crits, no doubt. And there they go. Anti-tank gun is on the field to manage the threat of that M20 a little more effectively. Riflemen with their flamethrowers are forced to retreat. M6 anti tank mines being planted right there. Grenadiers taking control of this strategic point. Moving to take control of the VP as well. This sheer quantity of firepower in the area. I don't know if Giap can hold this position. That's a nicely placed mine, though. I don't know if he's going to take the bait on that M20. Oh, he thought about it. He thought about it. Oh, nice pick up here in the north. Wow, Giap can really work. So many engagements simultaneously. I barely even caught that happening. Jove certainly didn't catch it in time. And that lieutenant's going to pick up an LMG-42 in addition to his Thompson and BAR, making him effective at all ranges. That'll be a nice thing to have. Maybe he can snipe, maybe he can laser beam that lieutenant, or that sniper down at range. An LMG burst in the red cover. We'll have to retreat for now. Sniper up to 17 kills, doing very well now. 13 minutes, 17 kills, very respectable. Utility car has been entered. Fully repaired, and there's the Sherman in production. He got his manpower float down with one extra squad of riflemen, certainly a reasonable option. And on this map, you can see he's using them very effectively, working all the flanks, putting huge pressure on his opponent. He took advantage of his very strong early game advantage with this commander to give himself a 250 victory point advantage in the early game. Very impressive. Now, Jove has a little more room to work with. He has gone mechanized. Oh my god. <laughs> has gone mechanized assault. Six CPs. Or not. Sorry, not mechanized assault. He has gone close air support. Six CPs. He's got redistribute resources cranking. So he's got three LMGs. He's got his minesweeper out. Hasn't spotted any M6 anti tank mines yet. Oh, oh my god. Are you serious? Wait, is that a teller mine? Oh, that's a teller mine. <laughs> I thought that was an M6 mine. Joke's on me. That's an M6 mine right there in the road. That's an M6 mine right there, but that one, here in the that's a teller mine. Okay. Mystery solved. The 
that out of there. He wasn't monitoring that squad. Gets sniped by the sniper. Oh, that flank! Oh, no, that flank! Nicely executed by Giev, and the sniper goes down without the help of light vehicles. Anti-infantry strafe pins down the riflemen, and these grenadiers may be able to force a full retreat with 222 support. The Sherman's not going to move to engage. It took one AT gun shot too many. Giev didn't like it and pulled back. I don't think they're going to get unsuppressed. He's trying to move up to support with this rifle squad. They're taking heavy damage pinned. There's one There's one retreat from those grenadiers. He retreats one rifle squad. Sticks around with the flamethrower, though. Sherman re-engages in the north. Shooting at the machine gun in the building. He finally retreats that pinned squad. He just couldn't get them unsuppressed. There's the second AT gun. Very, very uh, classic close air support build, by the way. Getting those two AT guns out really quick instead of trying to save manpower for battle phase three or two. So, I mean, obviously, Giab knows it's close air support. He took an anti infantry strafe. So he, now that he knows what his opponent's strategy is this game, it's going to be important for him to react to that in a, uh, in a sensible way. He's done a good job of preserving that Sherman, despite a pretty significant amount of anti-tank on the field. He needs to throw a minesweeper on his rear echelons, although they're inside of the utility car right now, so they can't do any minesweeping, so he has no idea that there's the teller mine right there. Best case scenario, if he doesn't... Well, best case scenario is he just doesn't hit the mine. But if something had to hit that mine because of his decision not to go minesweeper, he'd probably want that utility car to go down, or for the Sherman to hit it while nothing was available to follow up here in the north. He's already planted a pretty decent amount of M6 anti-tank mines, and as long as they don't get swept up by Jove's minesweeper, he should be in a pretty, pretty good position to maybe potentially bait any vehicles, further vehicles Jove may end up purchasing. It's quite difficult to get vehicles out as close air support if you're making heavy usage of that redistribute resources ability, so... It really just comes down to map control. We've seen Captain Price make it all the way to Tier 4 and 2 Panthers with close air support. The game has to run quite long, though, and against U.S. Forces Rifle Company, a long game might be kind of a tough sell. <laughs> one Sherman on the field already. Probably going to queue up another one now. In his, in the last cast I did of Giap, he went with uh, two Shermans and really worked the flanks hard. And that was Claude Ferma. Famonville kind of has a similar layout. Nice sweep here by Jove, by the way. Gets the, uh, gets the mine cleared up. Nicely played. And I like the way he's just sits on that teller mine with this with this scout car. He is just really trying to get that Sherman to get fed up. He's just trying to annoy the crap out of these riflemen. Get that Sherman up there to drive over that mine. Looks like he might succeed. Sherman's taking the north route. Oh! No, he's going to engage at range. Not overcommitting. Playing very smart. There's another wipe, though! Man, these simultaneous engagements at two different locations. It's all about engaging in multiple locations simultaneously and picking up wipes, just out microing your opponent. Look at that. Very nicely played by Giap right there, and another Grenadier squad goes down. I don't think he's lost anything this game. Three Grenadiers and a dead sniper compared to if the Observer Mode UI would work for once. Com compared to no wipes, except for the vehicle crew. I forgot about the vehicle crew. <laughs> vehicle crew has been wiped. So that's something. Lost his bazooka, which was a nice tool to have against the ut the uh, scout car. But compared to three grenadier squads and a sniper, that is huge losses. And just general model losses, you can see, have been kind of even a little bit in Joe's favor, actually, because of the sniper while it was still alive. But I think Giap is probably pulling even since the death of that sniper by quite a quite a bit <laughs> Giep is actually two people playing simultaneously exactly that's probably the best way to describe trying to fight against Giep is trying to fight against two separate engagements being microed very well at the same time which is in Co2 as anybody knows extremely difficult to do I think that's a beautiful way of putting it Sage these three squads are making their way over here towards the fuel. Oh, 
when the 222 goes down to the EZ8. I didn't even see it. Those AT guns are really late to react to this. Anti-tank strafe coming in. That's a rage strafe, if anything. That's not going to hit anything. <laughs> oh, no. Nice pickup by Giap. He's also another thing. He never goes in too hard. Anytime he trades up, he immediately disengages. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but anytime he takes out a priority target, boom, he's out of there. And he's like, okay, get everything back to safety. Get my bearings. That was a win for me. I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to go back to being really careful. Not to mention, of course, these two AT guns. The, the strafe was coming in. So not only did he trade the scout car, he traded a huge amount of munitions. 110 munitions, which did nothing. Great play. Lieutenant set up here in the north. Ooh. Rifle grenade does minor damage. Don't forget, by the way, they have that LMG 42 in, the, in there. LMG 42 is really going to bleed grenadiers on the advance. Look at this. They're barely even getting away. So much manpower bleed. Giap has Jove totally contained right now. Totally contained. It would seem that Rifle Company is emerging the victor here in the CAS vs. Rifle Company matchup. There's three AT guns on the field now, though. <laughs> oh, that miss! That miss on a main gun destroyed EZ-8. Wow. A little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. Giap is taking total control of this game either way, whatever it is. Plane crashes off map, I hope. Oh, okay, what? <laughs> I was like, what is with that really slow plane crash? That one happened in like slow motion. Maybe that's how Relic should balance plane crashes. Make them super slow so you have time to dodge. <laughs> Thanks, Quinn Duffy, for that retreating. This retreating lieutenant brought to you by Quinn Duffy. Every battle tells a story. TM. Ooh. That was a close one. Despite some near misses for Giap, including a main gun destroyed crit on an EZ-8, and an almost dead retreating rifle squad right there, I still don't think he's lost anything other than that vehicle crew. God damn it, observer mode. Yeah, still lost nothing but that vehicle crew, so doing pretty well. Pulling pretty even for model losses. He's still about 5 to 10 behind, depending on which of these numbers you believe. What the hell am I meant to do with these recruits? Green We're losing a capture point. Well, grab your shit and follow me. Ah, nuts. Men are ready. Three squads making their way towards the north to engage these grenadiers. There's another rifle grenade. Rifle grenade spam. Another hallmark of close air support, by the way. Joe has 300 munitions in the bank, and he's going to be relying on those to turn engagements and pop rifle flamethrowers. And so far, he hasn't gotten a single flamethrower pop. Hasn't been getting lucky enough. Nice, nice combination of suppression with the rifle grenade, by the way. It's basically impossible to dodge a grenade while suppressed. So, he's been making good use of that. Still no lucky pops, though. White Phosphorus on the team weapon and Grenadier squad right there. This could be a huge pickup if both of these squads get wiped. Oh, there's the machine gun. He's going in deep. He's going in hard. He's trying to end the game right now. AT strafe coming in on the easy 8 does... Oh, what is that? Are you serious? Oh my god, that is the worst plane crash I've ever seen happen in a tournament. That is the worst plane crash I have ever seen <laughs> happen in a tournament. Relic, please. Oh my god. Oh shit, esports. Esports confirmed. <laughs> That's right, you guys, $200 on the line, no big deal. <laughs> Plane crashes in the base and kills everything. <laughs> At least there were casualties on both sides. 
At least the Sherman and Grand Scott wipe. <laughs> RNGs, this doesn't discriminate. Oh man. At least Giev is keeping his cool right here. Secures another wipe on the flanks. There's GG. There's GG called. Let's be honest, I think Giev was gonna win anyway. I think he was gonna win anyway. That plane, as hilarious as that was, that plane aside, I'm pretty sure Giap had this game. Good game. Well played, Giap. Short break, and we're going to go into game two.